Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. I know usually on Sundays we're doing map updates, so we're looking at what kind of movements there are on the front lines. We're gonna, we would talk about the visit of Zelensky to the front lines and so on, but we're going to move it uh, maybe a day or two uh, for now because I think we have something much, much more important to talk about. I think the most important question that every single one of us wants to have an answer for is what's going to happen with Ukraine in the future. And in my perspective, anything that boosts the answer to that question is many, many times more important than just a day-to-day -day map update. And here, uh, General Zaluzhny, while uh, all of the media right now that were caught up in the speculation about dismissal of General Zaluzhny is now trying to twist and turn themselves, explaining that, oh, Zelensky just changed his mind and actually General Zaluzhny now is not going to be dismissed because of the reasons, we instead focus on the things that are ha actually happening in reality and focus on the facts. And the fact is that General Zaluzhny has wrote a nice article about his vision for the future of warfare. And it's, this kind of went on with little to no impact, which I believe is absolutely criminal. Because what we're seeing here is the head of the military, of the fighting army in a war to the scale that is biggest that there has ever been since the Second World War, he is describing what is the current battlefield and what are the challenges of the current battlefield. And his main focus right now is what the future of this battlefield would look like. What General Zaluzhny is describing in this article presented here by the CNN is he is describing the future doctrine for Ukraine. If ever you had a question about how the future of Ukrainian army would look like, how the future of warfare will look like, General Zaluzhny has the cutting edge knowledge about it and he's going to answer all of your questions right now. So once you go to the CNN article, you can read the, what CNN has to say about it, which I uh, advise you completely skip because we know that media just misunderstands everything. And instead, there is a third link right over here. And once you click that link on that article, it's going to take you to the actual article written by General Zaluzhny. So today I'm going to do something special. Today I'm going to just read you through the whole article. And you can write me in comments, how was it? Should I do it more instead of just doing the excerpts? And we're going to discuss it a little bit on the end. This might take some time, so please grab yourself a cup of coffee, something else, sit down, let, relax, and let's find out what the man that knows everything about modern warfare has to say about where it is heading. Almost 80 years separate us from the last battles of the World War II, which became the basis of the strategic vision of the wars of the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Despite the rapid development of weapons and equipment, namely aviation, missiles, and space assets, the development of communications and electronic warfare, the victory strategy was to destroy the enemy and capture or liberate the territory. At the same time, the forms and methods by which this was achieved directly depended on the level of development and the number of weapons used. Of course, knowledge of the basics of strategy, operational art, tactics, should accompany the career growth of a military specialist and serve to solve two main tasks. The first one is probably secondary. It consists in training of the commander directly for the upcoming war with the task of predicting the situation of war that will be, be that uh, that will be at the beginning of hostilities it is such a super difficult task in the event of a solution that allows you to rise to the occasion and give a worthy rebuff to the enemy bleed his strike force and thereby buy time to seize the initiative this whole process involves huge risks and doubts which are due to the presence of only one chance to give a decent uh, resistance to a smaller force with limited resources. Essentially, here General Zaluzhny explains that smaller countries, when faced against the invading force, which obviously prepares 
to invade other countries so it stacks all the benefits uh to his side, to the invasion force side. He says that it is the job then to, of defense force to train the uh, staff to make sure they're ready to uh, rise to occasion and deflect the upcoming force long enough so they can adapt. And then the second time task, in my opinion, is the main one, to find out in which time requirements put forward by the war related to the development of technological progress and as a result the rapid development of weapons and equipment the political situation both in the world and as a state itself the economic situation etc and therefore for each war it is necessary to find only its own unique strategy and logic which will allow in new conditions to find the way to the victory so essentially he is stating that the, the war in ukraine and like is any war is a unique and it has presented the set of unique challenges and now it was the job of the defensive force of ukraine to understand what war they're in and prepare for this war and this is what he is basically rising to occasion how to change ukrainian doctrine to adapt to the new situation Speaking of our own particular strategy, we can in no way reject fully existing doctrines that describe the process of preparing and conducting operations. We just have to realize that they will be constantly changing and filled with new content. The principle for operational war will remain unchanged. He says that what we're doing here is not a complete revolution, more like an evolution. Therefore, taking into account the requirements of today, our most important task will be to adopt a new point of view on the forms and methods of using the defense force to achieve victory. The main reason for the change in the strategy forms and methods of employment of force, of course, is the development of weapons and equipment, especially unmanned systems, the use of which has become widespread and allow to perform a wide range of tasks, which constantly which are which are constantly growing therefore unmanned systems allow with other advanced types of weapons are almost the only tool for withdrawing from military operations of a positional form which are not beneficial in terms of time for ukraine for a set of reasons essentially drones are a potential for the future for ukraine because this is what ukraine is able to adapt it has the resources and the rest there are difficulties with this then we get into the first kind of main point, which I highlighted. At the same time, in the current situation, there are still a number of factors that undoubtedly influence the decisions to search for new forms of employment of defense forces. Here are some of them. Unstable political situation around Ukraine, which leads to reduction in military support. High probability of Russia provoking a number of conflicts following the example of Israel and Yemen, and distracting key partners from supporting Ukraine. Exhaustion of our partners' stocks of missiles, ammunition for artillery and air defense due to the high intensity of hostilities in Ukraine and the impossibility of their rapid product production against the background of the global shortage of propellant charges. Uh, note, th the biggest problem for production right now of 155mm uh, ammunition and other ammunition is the inability to produce propellant charges in a large amounts because it's not just the metal shell that that people are looking for it's also the propellant charges insufficient effectiveness of the sanctions policy result resulting in the develop the deployment of the capacities of the military industrial complex in russia and its partner states which allow at least successfully waging a positional war of attrition a significant advantage in the mobilization of human resource of the enemy and the inability of state institutions in Ukraine to improve the state of manning of the defense force without a use of unpopular measures. Imperfection of the regulatory framework governing the military industrial complex in our country and partial monopolization of the industry uh, lead to difficulties in the production of domestic ammunition as a result the deepening of ukraine's dependency on the supplies of allies uncertainty of the future 
uh, uncertainty of the further nature of the armed struggle of such a scale as a consequence of the complexity for our allies in determining the priorities for support. Essentially, there is a lot of problems. And what this tells us first and foremost, that General Zaluzhny is completely in touch with reality. Every single point stated there is true. And every single point we've discussed many times, and I'm pretty sure you have opinion on this. And the point is that General Zaluzhny very acutely understands the problems that they are facing, and he addresses them directly. The experience of combat operations by the armed forces of Ukraine, especially in 2022-2023, is unique and still remains only our heritage. And therefore, constantly looking for a way to the victory obliges us to constantly conduct an audit of existing capabilities, on which the results of combat operations depend and look for ways to gain an advantage over the enemy. Moreover, using to con the concept of the result of hostilities, we understand the conditions under which the enemy will refuse further aggression, and it is the creation of such conditions that is perceived as an effective use of the capabilities that are available in the arsenal of the armed forces of Ukraine. What he's saying is that Ukraine has learned and understood what works and what doesn't work against Russia. In view of the mentioned above, as well as in accordance with the conditions of the war today, perhaps the main option for gaining an advantage is to master the entire arsenal of relatively cheap, modern and extremely effective assets that are rapidly developing. It is the attempt to take advantage of the progress in the development of new technologies that will allow to win the scientific technical, technological, and tactical battle, and will lead not only to the unconditional victory, but also to savings and conservation of resources, both by Ukraine and our partners. He's saying that there are possibilities to get Ukraine the capabilities it needs to win without over-sacrificing manpower on Ukrainian side and people, and without over-reliance on the necessary mass production of equipment or expensive equipment from the Allies' side. The need to significantly increase the capabilities of unmanned systems and other advanced technological systems to positively influence the course of hostilities as a consequence encourages the search for new forms and methods of use, which in turn will certainly affect the structure of both the armed forces and other components of the defense forces of Ukraine. It is possible to increase the impact of the Ukrainian uh, UES, uh, unmanned aerial systems and other newest systems on the effectiveness of combat operations due to continuous improvement of situational awareness of commanders and the possibility of maintaining it in real time in the area of the operations both day and night in all weather conditions, round-the-clock maintenance of fires and strikes in real time, providing intelligence for the strikes in real time, inflicting accurate and high-precision strikes against the enemy and its targets both at the forward edge of the battle area and in depth. So what he's saying is that the window, like the way that the old capabilities, the old artillery systems, tanks, everything that fires at the enemy has been used need to be evolved and adapt with faster cycle of intelligence that these unmanned ve uh, vehicles, unmanned uh, systems need to provide information for decision making almost as a live feed around the clock to the decision makers and the enemy needs to receive uh, the, the strikes and usage of the core capabilities of the armed forces in an absolutely different fashion than it is before, like we, for example, know by amassing stuff, and uh, etc. Consequently, it is necessary to create a new design of operations based on existing technological capabilities, which will be based not only on the spatial and temporal indicators of military operations, but also mainly on the creation of decisive conditions and the achievement of appropriate effects that will contribute to the realization of the, pur of the purpose of the operation. Based on the experience of combat operations and the forecast of the development of the armed struggle, such decisive conditions are the following. 
achieve absolute superiority in the air, especially at altitudes that provide effective fire engagement, ISR and logistics, depriving the enemy of the ability to conduct offensive or defensive operations, increasing the mobility of our own troops and completely limiting the mobility of enemy troops, safe access to certain lines, taking control of important areas of the terrain, depriving the enemy of the ability to re restore the lost positions and bolster efforts. All of these conditions, at the first glance, they are absolutely conservative and classical conditions. The achievement of which serves the achievements of which serves long-standing forms and methods. But this is only at the first glance, since the means of achieving them have already changed, and the old assets, unfortunately, are increasingly a dream for the armed forces of Ukraine. And he means a dream, like an achievable dream. The ways of achieving them are changing first and for all. In accordance with the presented idea of creating defining conditions, the process of achieving them, of course, will be ensured by solving a number of operational tasks. And during the solution of each operational task, the necessary effects will be created due to involved assets. And it is they who, at the expense of technological superiority, should act differ act deferring from the template in accordance with at least the current doctrine. The creation of the necessary effects, no doubt, today already radically leads to changes in the system of employment. Thus, to implement the conditions for creating the necessary effects, today it is necessary to consider as a separate the following. Digital field operations, digital field creation operation, radio electronic situation control operation, combined attack operation of unmanned aerial vehicles and cyber assets, logistic operation. So what General Zaluzhny describes here is new types of operation that the armed forces should execute. If you think about military uh, and how army works, then there is uh, certain orders that are given to the lower, like to the groups of the army forces, and then they're executing those orders. So what General Zaluzhny is describing here, that we need to have new types of operations described and how they should be executed, so then we can execute those operations to prepare the battlefield for our favorable conditions, so we are able to fight in this new type of warfare. All listed operations are already being mastered and developed. This is an important statement, already being mastered in develop, in de uh, developed. They are conducted according to a single concept and plan, coordinated and interrelated, but different in, con in interrelated, I'm sorry, uh, but different in content. Regarding the conduct of different operations to achieve effects, presumably in their content, they will essentially be defensive and offensive, but in terms of method of execution, they might be the following. Operations to reduce economic capabilities of the enemy, long-range drone attacks, operations of complete isolation and attrition, uh, ability to strike uh, enemy positions, uh, forward positions, for logistical positions with drones, robotic search and strike operations, robotic operations to control a crisis area, so surveillance and so on. Psychological operations by attack assets. Uh, this is something that um, people on the front line are having. This is especially, for example, uh, relevant in the Krinky area. I'm pretty sure you already heard many times that uh, Russians there are just like, they're having like this paranoia that the drones are buzzing all the times. And this absolutely destroys morale. The fear of drones is a real thing. And it's, it's, it's actually omnipresent in certain parts of the front line. Defensive technological contactless operations. So to, to prevent the enemy to even reach your positions by using unmanned vehicles. This list of operation will grow steadily with the development of the assets themselves, and of course will encourage changes in doctrinal documents and the formation of an entirely new philosophy of preparation and conduct of hostilities. The emergence of new independent operations or their combination leads to the necessity to create a new table of organization. All this will be possible with a flexible and rapid response of state institutions to change. Thus, there are changes in the essence and content of classic defensive 
offensive and stabilization operations, the approach to planning and the conducting of which was usually linear and template-based. At the same time, these operations were combined, in essence, including according to the views of the partners. So he's talking about how there were old templates that were used to calculate how the battlefield should look like. Along with this, the long-known concept of network-centric warfare in new conditions due to high-tech assets of armed struggle finds its interpretation not through the operations of troop, but through the creation of effects and the achievements of decisive conditions with the help of the appropriate capabilities. In addition, I would like to note that in addition to improving the effectiveness of combat operation, unmanned and other advanced technological systems are able to solve a number of key problems in the organization and conduct of the combat operations of the defense forces of Ukraine. And this is where we get to the meat and potatoes. Increase the degree of non-contact conduct of hostilities and as a result, reduce the level of loss due to the possibility of removed control of these assets. Strike the enemy with distant. Even if you have smaller army, you can defeat a larger enemy with a man for, man for, manpower. Reduce the degree of involvement of traditional weapons in combat missions. Less tanks, more drones. Ensure the conduct of hostilities with limited use of heavy military equipment. Despite the lack of Navy vessels, defeat both surface and submarine forces of the enemy and its coastal infrastructure to almost the entire depth of the theater at the sea with high efficiency and minimal risk to personnel. One of the things that we don't talk about is that Russia is continuously losing ships and ship crews compared to Ukraine. It's a absolutely one-sided losses for Ukraine. For, for Russia. Inflict massive sudden strikes against critical infrastructure facilities, important communications, without the use of expensive in-operation and production missiles and manned aircraft. Drone, drones, drones, mass drone swarms that no, no past generation air defense systems can even try to shoot down. The list of advantages is incomplete and will undoubtedly change, expanding the range of effective employment. Of course, on the battlefield, the enemy will look for ways to protect and try to seize the initiative. Therefore, with the development of the capabilities of attack systems, including unmanned ones, it is extremely necessary to improve protection and con counteract systems. Thus, in order to master new forms and methods the defense forces need to create a completely new state system of te technological rearmament, which will include the following subsystems, development and scientific support, production and maintenance, training of personnel and generalization of combat experience, use of troops, flexible financing and logistics. General Zeluzhny outlines a whole new area of armed forces that needs to be developed not just a side area, a whole new area with the logistical components, training components, a scientific component, development component, production component, all of that needs to be secured instead. Most likely, each of these subsystems will need separate research and development in the future, but now it is safe to say that the system should be holistic and at the same time flexible both to the Entities that can in, be involved and to finance and change production. Undoubtedly, all of this will take time, but it is the time that is decisive. Taking into account that already existing systems of employment, the technical solutions found, and our already established command and control systems, and the experience gained, as well as the According to the views of partners in modern conditions, the creation of such a system with required volume of production can take up to five months we have our so to say initial implementation date so to say this term is due to the need to create appropriate tables of organization and their manning and equipping personnel training resources support creation of the necessary infrastructure logistics and the development of doctrinal framework with this in mind, in 2024, we need to focus on my efforts the creation of a system provided for defense forces with high-tech assets, introducing a new philosophy, preparation, and conduct of hostilities, taking into 
account restrictions. As a result, in the shortest possible time to master the new capabilities for the conduct of hostilities. So we are talking about the fact that in modern conditions, the armed forces of Ukraine, together with other components of the state defense forces, have capabilities that allow not only to destroy the enemy, but also ensure the existence of statehood itself. Therefore, it is extremely necessary to take advantage of the opportunities provided by the new conditions of war to maximize the accumulation of the latest combat capabilities, which will allow less resources to inflict maximum damage on the enemy, stop its aggression, and protect Ukraine from it in the future. Let us take a second to realize what we just read and what does this mean? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of you have already seen the impact that drones had on the front line. And this is okay, this is us realizing them. But we just read the article and excerpt from the head of the chief of the military that is fighting this war right now now it's the person that makes the ultimate decisions is saying all of that not just some guy on the internet or a media reporter when general zaluzhny released his previous article he talked a lot about what kind of a warfare we're having and that this warfare needs a new kind of a technological leap that will allow ukraine to prevail but ukraine will need to find that technology grab it and employ it to the maximum what general zaluzhny is describing here is the solution to the article that everyone the only thing that that they kind of got from that article was stalemate and that it it without reading it further here general zaluzhny not only explained what he meant in the last article by saying we need to have a new movement forward he's explaining in details very excruciating details what exactly needs to be done in the next five months what will be done and happen with the armed forces of ukraine and how this new modern military with obviously it's not going to be nice and refined from right get-go but this modern military is going to fight the first 24th 21st century warfare not in the sense of a special operations like NATO is doing on the smaller countries, but the actual warfare of the modern era, with drones being the, the dominant force that will limit the Russians' capabilities, cut off any kind of their advantages that they had before, and ultimately destroy, take over the battlefield, and help Ukraine win. Thank you so much for watching this. I really hope you enjoyed this and it gave you the perspective that you need to understand where Ukraine is heading for specifically after the next five months. It's already here. And we are now witnessing the birth of the new type of army on the European continent, which is going to be forged in the fires of this war. And it's going to be absolutely majestic. So support Ukraine. Uh, if you can, give a subscribe to this channel. Check out the Discord for all of the other things. I love you all. Slava Ukraini, guys. And I'll see you next time.